So these are the bits I'm going to try to metalize. Um, they're just made of fast cast polyurethane and painted with black cellulose based paint. So the old fashioned stuff. Um, there's a little bit of texture on the surface, unfortunately. A bit of orange peel going on. Uh, that one's pretty bad. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway and just see how they come out. Incidentally, um, orange peel can be reduced by using slow thinners, or retarder it's called sometimes, with cellulose paint. So it flashes off slower and allows the paint to level out. Um, to load, I use sticky fixers and gloves, of course, because you don't want to have any fingerprints um, on your pieces. They're pretty reliable. What I didn't talk about in the last video was what motor turns the rotisserie um, via that rod. So it goes through the uh, rotary feed through and to that, no, oops, that motor there. And a little flexible coupler uh, to make sure not to put any axial load on the rotisserie because that might break the seal. Okay, you start to pump down. Leak valve closed. Pump on. This pump. Uh, Ronnie gauge on. Plunk. And wait. After 10 minutes or so, that's just the torch shining in the bottom viewport, just to check if anything has fallen off yet. And it hasn't. That's good. Yeah, it's going pretty slow at this stage. I'm not sure whether the new gasket is uh, working properly. It was a bit dirty, so I'm not sure if that's the case, but we'll see with the patience. Um, i turn on the high voltage and have a look inside. Ooh! Careful now. So after about 15, maybe 20 minutes, I'm still there. Come on, I'm still here. Now, I think this isn't gonna pump down with the um, mechanical pump any lower than this. I suspect that it's pumping away water vapour uh, from the inside of the chamber and possibly from the silicone fluid as well um, and it'll be stuck here for a long long time. I think you could probably heat up the chamber and drive off that water vapour as well. Um, I haven't had this chamber pumped down for a couple of months so there's probably rust and various crap from the inside of the workshop and it's very humid here um, so I suspect that's the case. Could also be a small leak, but I'll give it another few minutes and see if it gets any lower. I'm very close to, you no, know, in fact, I'm within the range of, of turning on the diffusion pump, so it should be okay, but I'll leave it a few more minutes to see what happens. Uh, speak of water vapor, um, the silicone oil in the diffusion pump uh, spontaneously kind of absorbs gases once it's at atmospheric pressure. And the first time you pump it down, probably each day, I'm not sure, but certainly if you leave it for a few days, uh, it, it boils off the gases before it starts to pump. So the pressure actually rises and I generally turn off the heater in case the pressure goes above its kind of critical level and burns. And then switch it on again once the mechanical pump is pumped away, whatever's come out of the gas of the silicon oil in the diffusion. So 
I expect to see this. Once I turn on the diffusion pump, I expect to see this rise and then fall and then rise and then fall as I switch on and off the heating element. And then after two goes, maybe normally, uh, the pump kind of kicks in, the diffusion pump kicks in and pumps away down to the relevant level. Um, I mentioned in the last video that this um, clearly overheated uh, um, neon sign transformer has a diode in it. I'm running it DC um, with with earth as the negative terminal, if you will, so that in principle it's safe to touch the metal parts of the <laughs> of the chamber. I wouldn't be touching them anyway, but if your earth is good, then I think that should be safe. Ish. High voltage is never safe. I'm achieving at the moment, be that a leak or moisture. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch on the diffusion pump with that. So that's now on and should be starting to warm up. And we'll wait to see some results up here. I expect, as I said, I expect the pressure to rise uh, initially. Well, after all my talk, the, the the oil didn't actually have gas, which is really weird. It's starting to pump down now, um, without it rising hugely. I'm not really sure what happened there. I had the, the butterfly valve closed, so maybe that just kept it dry enough for it not to absorb any atmospheric moisture. Anyway, you can see it's starting to rise there. Actually, let's put on this again so what we're going to do is wait for that to uh, disappear that um, discharge to go invisible and we'll just see what the vacuum level is like that you can see it's starting to fall quite quickly at the moment it's gone it's just gone out and we are at, there, nearly a 10 to minus 3. My voltage is still on, no discharge in the chamber. And once this gauge bottoms out, I normally leave it for another like 5 minutes or 10 minutes of pumping just to uh, get us to a better level of vacuum. I'm not sure exactly what vacuum I'm getting to, but at least I know it's minimum 10 to the minus 3. So I just did something very stupid there. Um, I managed to forget to turn on the cooling water for the diffusion pump. So I was running it without any coolant. Uh, hopefully the workshop is cold enough <laughs> so that I didn't really make a big fuck up that time. Um, it started a pump, which was interesting. So yeah, we'll see if it leaked um, silicon oil back into the chamber because there was no coolant running in the baffle. Um, yeah, that was a bit stupid, really. Anywho, there you go. We've hit the second set point, so I'll leave it a few minutes and hope the best. Once that's done, uh, diffusion pump heater off, and rotisserie off, or any gauge is still on, and backing pump is still on. And leave that on until the diffusion pump is cooled down completely. Okay, so that's cold enough. What I'm gonna do is leave the backing pump on and leak some air into the chamber. You want to do it in this order so there's no back streaming of oil from the vacuum pump into the vacuum chamber.
Looking pretty good. Yeah, look what happened to one of the, the boats. And this is only number two, firing number two on, in that boat. I must be overheating it maybe, or I'm not really sure. Also a lot of uh, haziness in that deposition. So there you go, that's the end result. Pretty good, I think. Or at least as good as the base coat. Um, you can see quite clearly on this where the base coat is smooth or pinholed. the type of gas cylinder that I used for the vacuum chamber. It's the bottom end of the gas cylinder flipped over. 